Hi everyone, it's Quickie Baby, and welcome back to World of Tanks. And it's currently day three of what is meant to be a five day trading caravan event, but I can tell you I don't need to wait another two days to know that this was probably the worst event, at least with regards to purchasing content in the history of the game. It was poorly thought out and conceived, incredibly poorly communicated, and that has resulted in, frankly, the community being fully justified in being incredibly frustrated about the whole experience. So I've already talked about the Trading Caravan event in a video that I released on Monday of this week before I had all of the details, but if you want to know all of the nitty gritty mechanics, I thoroughly recommend you go and check that one out before you hear the critique today. So my first point is that the, the event didn't even really work. Here's my stream from the release of the Caravan event, and you would literally have to be sitting there for a very long period of time to even be able to successfully access it. You'd have to be constantly clicking, constantly refreshing, even to be able to roll. It was so slow that I felt like you could only get about one roll every minute, or maybe like two rolls if you were incredibly lucky. Then I thought, well, maybe later on in the day it will be better. And even eight hours after the event started, when I was trying to access it on my, my free-to-play account, I just couldn't. I tried re-logging in, I tried restarting my PC, I tried refreshing a million times. I should probably stop that because I don't want to uh, affect anyone with epilepsy. But considering how limited some of the stock was, it was frankly unfair that people who were even scheduling time of their busy day ready to be able to get on the trading caravan immediately were unable to even roll or access the limited stock items. Now, considering that it was a brand new event for Wargaming, you'd want to give them the benefits of the doubt to say there were some teething problems. But frankly, when you put brand new content inside the game that's time limited, there are tank collectors out there who through probably no fault of their own were unable to purchase the brand new tier eight premium tank, the Kirovets one, purely because the event was unavailable due to technical reasons. And as a tank collector, that would be incredibly infuriating, and I'm sure that Wargaming annoyed a huge amount of their biggest customers with this poorly managed release, that even nine hours after the event was not accessible for some. Next, I want to talk about what probably was the biggest problem, that there was some brand new content that went into the game with regards to the, the Kirovets one, and that to be able to access it, you had to roll 75,000 credits a time to even earn the privilege of being able to purchase that said new content in the game, especially when that new content was really the main selling point of the event, which was titled Trading Caravan, Discover the Kirovets 1 and the T-22 Medium, with an exquisite black marble 2D style, and calling the T-22 Medium tank a to fear the rare Soviet tier 10. Now, this wouldn't be bad if there was some kind of bad luck protection or if Wargaming gave us more than a paltry three free rolls every single day. However, I started rolling with the lagging event 35 minutes into my stream and while doing absolutely nothing else with an audience of, I, I think I had about 4,000 people watching me, literally frustratingly trying to keep putting in 75,000 credits into the World of Tanks slot machine, it took me 50 minutes before I actually managed to roll and be able to earn the privilege of being able to get the Kirovets. And yeah, I think you can see uh, how frustrated I was. Now, I can tell you exactly how much I had to spend to be able to get the Kirovets, at least with a roll access, because I recorded the credits that I had at the start and the credits at the end. And it was 4,725,000 credits, meaning that I had to roll 63 times before I had access to the Kirovets 1. And let me clarify that I have a lot of the other bundles inside my garage. So to all intents and purposes, because it wouldn't show you bundles that you already had, I probably had a massively higher chance of being able to access the Kirovets 1 compared to everyone else, just because I'm a huge blooming whale on my main account and I already have all of the tanks. 
There's no doubt during the 50 minutes of my life that I wasted, and the near 5 million credits that I wasted rolling to be able to get a new- the, uh, the availability to be able to purchase a new tank for 15 million credits, that it was one of the most frustrating things I've ever done in World of Tanks. And 5 million credits is no joke. 5 million credits if you're playing your premium tanks with credit boosters is between 5 and 10 hours of gameplay depending on how well your session is going. I mean, Wargaming, how can you be so greedy and so stupid to release brand new content in a game in this way where you're forcing your your most loyal customers to be online at a specific hour of the day then waste uh, for me, it was an hour of my life with a broken buggy system and also to spend probably five to ten hours of their life grinding in premium tanks with credit boosters in the game just to have the privilege of purchasing a brand new tier 8 premium that is not even as good as an Object 703 for 15 million credits. Which is, if they're grinding in their tier 8 premium tanks with credit boosters, probably about 15 to 30 hours of their life. Honestly, when I put it like that, I feel like a complete and utter mug. What am I even doing with my life? Now, I'm in the position of needing to have this new co uh, content inside the game so that I can make new content for it, or should I say of it, for my YouTube channel and for my Twitch streams. But I can tell you if I was not a professional World of Tanks content creator, this would be an incredibly stupid thing to do. And I have no idea how Wargaming can justify this, or do you think they're just constantly trying to push the boundaries more and more and more to see how much they can get us to grind the game, or more likely how much they can get us to pay into the game to have these, these vehicles that they aren't even that special. This rolling system was pure gambling. Disgusting, pure gambling. And I read stories of people having to roll not just the near 5 million credits that I spent, but 15 million credits to be able to have access to the Kirovets 1. I even heard that some players have dumped that many credits, but they weren't even able to purchase the vehicle because it sold out before they finally got there. Which brings me to my next point. The brand new content, the Kirovets 1, sold out in roughly two to three hours on the European server. So there was no point of putting it in your basket. You pretty much had to roll to be able to get it and then somehow in a two to three hour window, get 15 million credits on your account. Well, what happens if you don't have 15 million credits on your account? Well, I guess you have to sell your tanks, you have to sell your consumables, sell your equipment. This kind of timed pressure purchase is absolutely disgusting. And I know there are probably people who have crippled their account, at least with regards to having equipment stocked up or having consumables stocked up, which maybe they purchased uh, in sales or maybe they just earned them through events and missions, who have now dumped all of that time pressure to either keep rolling or even to just purchase the tank that they didn't even know how much it was going to cost in the first place. Which brings me to my next point. The other vehicle that was heavily marketed in this event, the T-22 Medium, nobody had any idea before the event began that it would actually cost 25,000 bonds, which is a currency that you can't just magic out of thin air. There's no way to purchase it. The only way to get 25,000 bonds is to work uh, either by grinding your tier 10 tanks week on week on week, which are actually limited behind a bonds cap on each vehicle, or alternatively to participate in events that award bonds like ranked. So a lot of players went and dumped millions and millions and millions of credits trying to roll for tanks and they had absolutely no idea unless they were watching my stream where everybody was uh, exchanging information that the vehicle that maybe they were trying to roll for, they couldn't even afford to purchase with no way of being able to get those 25,000 bonds. Which makes me question to Wargaming, why was there no list of stock? Why was there no list of stock that had sold out? And why was there no price list? So if you were even rolling and gambling to be able to get a specific tank, how would you even know that you could be able to afford it? It was predatory at the least. I do have to clarify though, that just this morning, that if you go to Wargaming's homepage and you click three tabs down on the trading caravan event and then you do a drop down box at the top, it tells you 
tanks that have already sold out that maybe people are gambling to be able to get. While this is definitely a good step war gaming, this should have been in the game by default. And I know that it's taken three days to be able to present this kind of information that should have been in the store. And I know that during those three days, that players will have dumped millions and millions and millions of credits trying to get access to these vehicles. And just how stupid are Wargaming trying to make us feel? Surely they should be trying to treat their customers and their, their biggest supporters with more respect than releasing a half-baked system that frankly just ended up probably frustrating more people than it did rewarding them. Now, I want to also clarify that there were some good opportunities to be able to, to get nice tanks. For example, on day one, there was an incredibly limited amount of Astron Rexes that were available for a single credit. However, how many millions of credits did you have to spend to be able to even get that? And also, everybody who already had the Astron Rex would have never been able to see that purchase option unless they sold the tank before and then hoped that they got it to come up again. Hopefully Wargaming will learn from this and there should be a stock list. And also considering that people are frankly gambling to their credits to be able to access the tanks, Wargaming should have published what is actually available in the caravan. And I feel that they should have had some kind of bad luck prevention system so that after you've rolled a certain amount of times, as they have done with their loot crates at Christmas, that the game would at least show you something new. The next point that I want to highlight is that why do some offers cost more than their default sales prices? Let's see if I can find one, for example. I've got three free shuffles. What am I going to be able to find? Uh, well, at least the system's actually working now three days into the event. It definitely wasn't on the, for the first nine hours that I was playing. It's offering me lots of styles. Are we going to get anything interesting? Doesn't look like it. In fact, it just offered me the same style twice. Shows you how much of a whale that I am that I must have pretty much everything already purchased. The deal that I was frankly trying to roll to see if I could magically be able to get was the Universal Training Manual, which Wargaming was selling, if I'm not correct, for 3 million credits. However, a training manual costs 2 million credits. So while you could argue, well, you can purchase a universal training manual and you can apply it to all of the different crews, why didn't you why wouldn't you just keep the credits on your account and then purchase the book that you need for a 2 million credits instead of 3 million credits for the crew that you wanted to apply it to? And that's not even a sales price. There were so many bundles appear with absolute tripe inside them, like consumables at near full prices, that it was undoubtable that Wargaming frankly just put them in there to be able to inflate the sales list so that you have to roll more and waste more of your credits. Which brings me on to my next point. Wargaming, nobody wants to buy 100 gun laying directives at full price price. And if I had to see that one any more time when I'm spending 75,000 credits a pop to be able to see it, it just made me want to alt F4. Next, you couldn't choose which bundle inside your, your basket or your saved list you wanted to replace. You could only replace the bundle that you just put inside the basket. This ended up with incredibly frustrating situations where you filled your basket with offers of things that maybe you want to purchase when their price has gone down a little bit, but maybe you put something in there that you actually really didn't want to, but now you've got better offers that you don't want to replace and you couldn't be able to choose which one you wanted to get rid of. So Wargaming, if you ever listen to this, this feedback, please incorporate a system where you get to remove a specific bundle so that you can replace it with things that you might actually want. And this brings me on to my final point. And that is considering how soon this event has happened after the under the hammer, there's no doubt that players are showing fatigue from frankly being milked by Wargaming during such events. So much so that Wargaming have even gone to the forums, in my opinion, trying to calm down the situation by announcing that there is going to be no black market planned for this year. 
There's no doubt in my mind that Wargaming have realized how successful the black market was la last year and they wanted to create not one but two new events in, in just a couple of months at the start of 2022 which kind of work in the same way. We had the Under the Hammer and now we've got the Trading Caravan. And while Under the Hammer was exciting because it was there for, should we say, the whales of World of Tanks who wanted to get something rare at, at definitely an inflated price, I feel like this event was surely meant to be for the more casual players to maybe get a good deal on a Cromwell Blinn or a Type 59. And while undoubtedly a lot of the more sensible players of World of Tanks have gone in and been able to get a Type 59 or they've been able to get a Cromwell Boleyn for a, a nice amount of gold or credits, there were still just so many things about this event that were just so poorly planned, so poorly communicated. And frankly, I've never questioned my, shall we say, desire to have all of the new content more than today. Because I'm not sure if you feel the same way. It's exhausting. The very idea of spending 20 million credits with no other option to be able to purchase a brand new vehicle. And you've only got two or three hours to be able to figure out all of the system and to be able to get your hands on it is just depressing. And I would honestly get the World of Tanks community to question about whether you should even try to keep up if Wargaming are trying to push this heavy time-based, auction-based, and just frankly awful system upon us to be able to keep getting the new content as you go along in World of Tanks. And so I'd personally like to apologize a little bit for my tank review on the Kirovets 1 because I didn't even know how hard it was going to be to be able to get the tank. I had no idea that you were only going to be able to purchase it in a two to three hour window if you were willing to sit there for an hour of your life, constantly rolling credits just to be able to get lucky and to be able to get the tank. And also I'd like to apologize for releasing the T22 tank review, even though I think it's a great video if it's ended up with anyone going and rolling and getting disappointed that the vehicle ended up costing 25,000 bonds. I feel I'm in a really tricky situation with these kind of events because everybody's going to be asking me about them. The community clearly gets very hyped up about them. And frankly, until they start, I don't see all of the problems that there was going to be with the trading caravan. And I hope that this video is heard by Wargaming. They improve their subsequent events and I also hope that it strongly makes the World of Tanks player base question how much is too much with regards to the hoops that Wargaming wants us to jump through and draining and squeezing your World of Tanks economy so much that they really want you to get out the credit card. Anyway, ladies and gents, boys and girls, that was it for today. Really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. If you hated it, give it a thumbs down and let me know in the comments what you think about everything that I've presented here. Do you think I'm being too critical? Do you think that I'm being too nice? Is there anything you feel that I've missed out on that Wargaming could improve for the next caravan? And as always, thank you so much for watching. You've been epic and hopefully I'll see you soon.